Hi. Um, my name is Kelly. This is actually my first convention. Welcome. Um, and my question is, in which season do you think Sam had the best hair? <laughs> <laughs> I feel like we should both answer that. Yeah, definitely. I don't think I can hey. answer that. Is that the long, long hair? Am I crazy? Is this a debate? He's had the same freaking haircut for 13 years. Hey, take it easy. What am I missing here? Take it easy. He had a beard for a half a minute at the beginning of the season. Thank God he got rid of that. His hair's never changed. I, my favorite, <laughs> my favorite, I feel like I'm taking crazy pills. My favorite overall hair above the neck of Sam's. Do you need to point oh, that out? I'm saying like there's hair all over the place. Arms and legs. I don't think here nor there about that. But that having been said, I think my favorite hair of Sam's of all time was episodes one, two, and three of season 14. Oh. Eyebrow hair, nose hair. One time I did walk back to my trailer after shooting a few scenes, and I was like, what in the... And there was a big nose hair sticking out. <laughs> yeah, probably saw that episode, yeah? Uh, well, when you came back, uh, after we'd worked together for a couple hours and you went to your trailer and you saw that he came back, I was like, ah, damn, he found it. <laughs> <laughs> what was your favorite Sam hair? Well, you got really specific with episodes, but my favorite Sam hair was just in season nine. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's when it really began to take shape. <laughs> oh, well, you wouldn't answer my question. What am I missing here? <laughs> just the length changes. It goes like below his shoulders in season eight, and then at season nine, it just is right out of shoulders. <laughs> is this like one of those things where I'm like, oh, hey, honey, did you, did you change the color of your hair? She's like, yeah, six months ago. I'm like, ah, don't call me honey. Uh, which, which was it below your shoulders at one point? Don't yell at me in front of my friends. <laughs> ah, so... He always tells me it's like staring into the sun, so he doesn't see the hair. Oh, which episode of season nine was that? Gabriel? Which was season nine about? Gabriel? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Are you sure? Oh, well, he wasn't Sam. He was Gadriel. You didn't say, what's your favorite Gadriel haircut? I would have said season nine when he had his hair below his shoulders. <laughs> I'll go back and watch it, and I'll show Jensen some more season nine. Thank you, thank you. That's not below his shoulders. It's like below his ears, maybe. That is long. Dude, you do look kind of like a like a, a romance novel cover there. That's, that's the nicest thing you've ever said to me. Uh, thank yeah, you so much for the girl question. Thank you. on the novel cover. That was long hair. That was yeah, I don't remember that. that. We had, who's whose favorite was season eight? I heard some season eight favorites. Season eight. What's up? What, 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 what season was your favorite Dean haircut? Technically a different character. I mean, it was like a variation of Dean. That yeah, was it was Demon Dean. It was. <laughs> All right, I don't know. I. This is me in the, in the when I just sit down in the air chair. 
get the hair dead, this is me. <laughs> okay, Jensen, you're done. All right. Some smut magazines. Uh, thank you so much for your questions. Hi, hi. Hi, boys. Hi. How are you? Uh, so I just finished watching season one through twelve with my mom, and over the past five months, so we always have something puzzling at the end of each DVD, and that was a supernatural can't be played in churches and such. And in that list was oil rigs. Do you guys know why or have personal <laughs> thoughts on that? <laughs> what? You know about this? What? what? <laughs> in the list at um, the end of DVDs where it says like the warning, it can't be played in like churches, kind of given for Supernatural, but other venues and stuff. And in that list there is oil rigs. Do you guys know why? <laughs> This is, is this like a Warner Brothers warning? I think so, yeah, it's probably part of it. Wait, is, does anyone, what? Does anyone yeah. else know what? Yeah. It counts as like public broadcast, so yeah. it'd be like playing in a theater or something. Oh, it's like playing it in a theater if you play it at an oil rig. <laughs> sure, I get that, that makes sense. Yeah, I don't think it's anything sinister. I think it's, yeah, I think it's just some sort of a copyright law that is odd, that oddly includes oil rigs. Well, <laughs> because Lord knows what goes on there. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, actually, that's, that, we had some super, super, super fans on oil rigs for a while. <laughs> and they just got out of control. Um, there was a lot of, they were doing some really kind of creepy cosplay stuff that uh, finally we just had to ask them to stop. Um, they're not allowed to play the DVDs were, on oil rigs anymore now. And the, you know, obviously there's some guys on oil rigs that don't do that, but it was a big problem with a lot of them, and so unfortunately everybody had to get punished. <laughs> <laughs> Glad we can clear that up for yeah, you. Yeah, thanks for asking. Hi. I love that now there will be, there will be fan fiction about what goes on on <laughs> Oil Don't with, let us down. No. <laughs> we will be using all of the proper Boolean search terms soon, so. <laughs> I just have a question about like recent like oh god who made me a parent how am I responsible for this tiny human sort of thing like I drive in Houston every day so I accidentally taught my toddler some colorful language which uh, she says at completely inappropriate times. You so, drive in Houston? Yeah, kind of don't have a choice. It's, it's okay. <laughs> so I was wondering if there's any recent parenting fails where we were like oh shit like I can't believe that just happened. <laughs> uh, yeah, this wasn't really a, yeah, I guess we can call this a fail. Um, Jen and I, we wanted to kind of make the, the house festive and the boys were begging. We traveled so much, the boys were like, can we stay in Austin for Christmas? Like, of course. Like, you know what, let's try and make it a cool festive. And we like lights and we decided to put some trees uh, in the boys' rooms. You know, little small trees, but like have them, they both did ornaments at their schools. And it's like, cool, this will be a neat. And then before Christmas, we'll all get together and put up a big tree downstairs. Um, but, uh, this is an accidental fail. Uh, so, Shep, uh, who I call Drunk Jared, um, <laughs> he'll be five in a week, uh, but he's, he's a pretty curious little kid, and they were, I guess they were kind of misbehaving a little bit, so Genevieve was like, Tom, Shep, go to your rooms, um, you just both need to kind of take some time, so go to your rooms, read a book, whatever, and about 15 minutes later, um, Tom starts yelling, Mom! Mom! And so Jen kind of goes up and she's like, yes. Uh, and they've all been sick. And Tom goes, uh, Shep, he figured out a way to make the lights shock him. So, <laughs> Shep had unplugged the lights and unscrewed them and then plugged it back in and touched the part. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Funny but not funny. Uh, <laughs> And so Jen calls me, and it's another one of these, uh, another yeah. one of these moments where Jen calls, and I'm like, "Hey!" And I see her face like, "Hey!" Hey! She's like, "I need you to talk to Chef." I was like, "What's going on?" 
said, well, he almost tried to kill himself in front of the house now. Like, okay, well, tell me some more info so I know what's going on. So I, I shifted some face down. I'm like, hey, buddy, what happened? He's like, um, the lights got unplugged. Like, okay, what, what else happened? Um, and Jen's like, you're not going to get in trouble, just tell your dad. He's like, well, I turned them in a circle. Like, you turned the, you turned the lights in a circle? He's like, yeah, and then they came off. And when you touch it, it makes you feel funny. <laughs> So, um, yeah, it's sort of an accidental fail, but um, you're gonna be on your toes with these little guys. Uh, when our deck gets bigger. Trust me, you'll be fine. Um, I, uh, I was uh, recently one of the parents chaperoning a field trip for my daughter's kindergarten class. And uh, I was the only dad. Uh, <laughs> and, which was fine because there was I think there was like four moms and then and then me and, and the teachers and so I was basically just a pack mule like they'd load me up with the cooler and all the snacks and the backpacks and the jackets and I'm just you know which is fine um, but uh, at a certain point they were like doing some like arts and crafts or something this was out at a farm and. Uh, and I noticed that uh, you know JJ was trying to, to get to the front where she could hear the counselor lady explain what was going to happen. And one of the little boys uh, shoved her because uh, she kind of came up next to him, and he just turns and goes boom, and then she turns around and like shoves him back, and nobody sees this but me, and shoves him back, and then and then he's like about to you know. Picks, yeah, it's about to escalate, and so I just kind of grab his arm and I just kind of move him over here. I wanted to do more, uh, and I diffused it very quickly before anybody really even saw it. Um, and then because I did that, he kind of got upset and went over to his mom, who happened to be there as well. Didn't say anything, was just like upset. And mom was like, "What's wrong? What's wrong?" And he was just like, "No." So I was like. A little punk. Uh, and that wasn't necessarily the fail. The fail came later when um, we were going over to the uh, goat and, and these goats had horns. And it said very clearly on the, on the gate to stay back from the fence because the horns can get through and can get you. Um, so I walked, I walked a few of them over there to supervise. And here comes a little buddy. Why don't you go see if one can come over to you? <laughs> and one started to to kind of motor over to him. And he was right against the fence, and I was literally just holding the other like four kids back. And I'm like, I'm like, shh. Just let it happen. I will say though that before the goat got too close, I reached over and I grabbed the back of the collar. I grabbed the back of his collar, pulled him back, and I was like, no, 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 let's go, come on back. But it was, it was an attempted fail. I gotta be careful. I gotta, I gotta curb that because I know I'm gonna be put in that situation a lot with three kids. So, so this is the way he pulled the kid back. Right as the goat was getting close, he's like, oh, "All right." <laughs> <laughs> I was saving him. I had to save him from the goat. I had to save him from the goat. The goat was gonna get him. Back up, kid. Back up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey. That's, that's, that's good parenting. Anyway, <laughs> I think that's good parenting. Well, I had a moment at the trailers, at the food trailers. Okay, I'll tell it. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much. Bye. And there's, the, you know, some of the great things that I enjoy about doing what we do on the show is uh, sometimes we we do things that we don't wouldn't necessarily ever get to do in real life, like drive a car backwards and flip it around and do a reverse 180, or uh, 
or vampires, or uh, or kick down doors. Um, wait, 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 what do you mean we don't get to do it in real life? I heard that a door was kicked down last night. Well, unless... Unless a situation arises in real life where some of those skills can be put to use. Like what? So last night. We, true story, true story, we get home from dinner. And uh, and it's 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 getting late. Dinner we dinner was a little later. People go out a little later than normal yeah. here. I think yeah. is that are we totally off on that? No. Okay. So it's a little later than, than normal. We get, we get we get back to the hotel a little later than anticipated. And it was like okay, we gotta we gotta go to bed. Like we gotta wake up early. So we all went to our respective floors, and I went to my room and put the key in. Put the key in. Put the key in. <sighs> back on the elevator, back down to the lobby. My key doesn't work. Here, try new key. Thank you. Back up the door, man. Key, nothing. Key, nothing. Key, nothing. Key, nothing. <sighs> then Dean started to be born. So I go back downstairs and I'm like, no working. <laughs> and to the, that's not French. <laughs> he understood it. Then he's like, let me, uh, let me use my key. So he comes up with his master key and he, he nothing, nothing, master key, nothing. He's like, oh, I don't know what, uh, this, is, this is not good. <laughs> yeah, keep in mind, it's late, it's after midnight. And I'm tired, and I want to go to bed. And I know I gotta get up and, and put on a show for you guys, because that's why we're here, and that's what we love to do. And... <laughs> so, he's like, I'm sorry, this is just not... I woke up to maintenance guy. Um, so, maintenance guy comes up with his own tool belt, and he basically does the exact same thing that we've been doing. Puts the key in, puts the key in. Uh, no noise, not the word English. I'm like, yes, we've established that it's not working. How do we get it to work? Uh, I don't have the tools that are required to do this. So, um, uh, we're going to have to call the locksmith. Okay. Do that then. There is no locksmith that's for four hours. So, uh, we, uh, there's nothing that we have to wait till the morning. Um, well, that's not gonna work for me. The front desk guy is like, well, we will get you into another room, uh, the presidential suite. I'm like, I don't care about the president. I want to get into my room, and I want to get into it now so that I can go to bed and wake up and go to work. There's, there's nothing that we can do today. Uh, I'm so sorry. Um, what would you like us to do? Get in my room! I want to get... And I'm like, listen, if you can't get into my room, I will get into my room. <laughs> and, and he's like, I'm, I'm sorry? <laughs> I said, are you saying that you cannot open this door? Is that, yes, is it impossible? Okay, I'm gonna kick the door in. And he just goes, okay. <laughs> and I was like, that's all I needed. Walked over, slid the furniture that was in the hallway aside, stepped back, boom! <laughs> it exploded the door. <laughs> and he left a hole in it like this big. It was, this, it was basically the entire mechanism of the locking mechanism. I thought the door would swing open and the door jam would have broken, but no, the entire lock and handle and iron plate that it was on went through the door. And, uh, and I looked at him and I go, you're going to need a new door. Good time.
open. The door swung open nice and free. It closed with a big giant hole in it, and I went to bed. <laughs> the upside of that story is anybody here could have spied on him in his sleep last night. <laughs> At that point, I didn't care. <laughs> I, I mean, I, you know, I give it to the staff there. They did. They, honestly, I don't think it ever crossed their mind that that the the big Texan standing before them was going to murder their hotel room. <laughs> I think, I think, I think his response the okay was more like, I'm not quite sure I understand what you're saying to me. But I didn't wait, I didn't wait for him to figure it out. I just, uh, I just destroyed the door. So, uh, so long story short, his favorite part of being on the show is learning important life skills. No, it was Rob. It was Rob. Rob said something. Uh, he, he was like, do you think that if you didn't kick down doors all the time on the show, that that, that, that idea would have ever crossed your mind? I'm like, I don't think it would have. <laughs> but we kick down doors all the time. I'm like, this is obviously the progression of things to do. You try the key. If it does not work, you try a maintenance man. If that doesn't work, you break the freaking door down with your foot. You're going to need a new door. <laughs> and see. Uh, I was just wondering if you had any cute or funny stories to share about your kids and your family. I kicked a door in last night. <laughs> I don't know if you heard that one. This is pretty cool. <laughs> we had a... And my question is, uh, so there's been some talk yesterday at Misha's panel about wieners. Popular subject with him. Typically. Yes, he loves them. That was the question. He had, you know, he had mentioned that, but he did ask us to specifically ask you, Jen, a story about wieners that you wanted to share with us. Uh, Jensen, will you, uh... Yeah, I'm happy to, happy to jump on this grenade. Uh, I was, I was, uh, well, I was going to save the story for the big panel this afternoon, but maybe I'll tell it twice today. So, uh, last weekend, um, some friends and I went, uh, went to a music festival in Louisville, Kentucky, and other than music, uh, Louisville, Kentucky is also known for bourbon. So one of my favorite bourbons is, uh, is Angel's Envy. And we got to go and do a, a distillery tour at this facility. And only because they were packed, they were slammed, there was you know, a lot of people in town for the festival, and a lot of people wanted to go to the tasting room and get tours. They weren't doing any private tours, but uh, I, had, I had my buddy call and Pose as like uh, <laughs> no he, well anyway it was his decision he called and said hey listen my buddy's here uh, and want to see if you guys can do private tours and they're like no 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 we're totally booked we've got nothing we, we can't we're understaffed as it is everybody's at the music festival so he's like all right well maybe he just took down my number and you could call me back and if you find somebody that would want to do a tour that'd be great he's like well, I'm telling you right now I'm the manager and there's nothing there's nobody here but sure I'll take your information. I was like, okay, it gives him his, his name and number. He's like, and, uh, and my buddy, his name is uh, uh, Jensen Ackles. And the guy goes, from Supernatural. <laughs> so he's like, yeah, yeah. He's like, uh, hang on one second. So <laughs> uh, what time would you want to come by? <laughs> oh, maybe, I don't know, an hour, hour and a half or so. <laughs> All right, you know what? I'm going to take care of it myself. Uh, my name's David. So when he when he comes here, just uh, just have him have him find David, and uh, I'll, I'll give him, I'll give him and his uh, him and his friends uh, a private tour. 
He's like, that's fantastic, great, thank you, David. So we show up there, there's David, and super nice guy. He comes right up, he's like, look, I'm just gonna get this right out of the way. Huge fan of the show, my wife and I, we watch every single episode. We're such big fans, we actually have a Doberman pitcher at home named Jensen. <laughs> oh my God. I was like, not Dean? <laughs> like actually Jensen? He's like, yeah. He's like, and we have a wiener dog named Misha. <laughs> Not a word of a lie. And I fold it over laughing. And then I get up and I'm like, well, what about Jared? He goes, ah, our apartment's too small for a sheepdog. <laughs> friends. Uh, Especially after bourbon. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, now you're going to give me bourbon? Uh, this is a relationship I enjoy. Uh, so that's the, and I, I could not wait to tell Misha this story. And I couldn't do it over the phone. I couldn't send him a text. Or anything. I, had to, I had to tell him in person because I wanted to see his face and it was worth the wait. Because his face basically did like this. See what his face always does. Uh, question. I want to go. You know, the, it, one of the moments that, that, because he's up here, one of the moments that jumps out to me that was like one of those moments that kind of furthers a relationship into a friendship was he and I were getting to know each other. We went out for uh, dinner out at the, where are we, Gastown in Yale Town. And we sat down at this, we sat down at this this table, and it was this really kind of cool bar. And uh, the waitress came up, and she says, uh, "Do you guys know what you want?" And Misha takes my menu out of my hands, takes his menu, hands them to her, and goes, "We'll take the three least ordered items on the menu." <laughs> Now that would be fine if it was, you know, a burger joint or, a, you know, a steakhouse or something to that degree. This was like a very kind of uh, new age kind of a restaurant. They had you know? brains on the menu. Yeah, you wonder why we know that. <laughs> so we had that. We had sweetbreads, which is basically fried glands. Um, and I'm like, man, they... I'm like, man, this friendship's gonna be a lot of work. <laughs> <laughs> and, I, and I remember there was a piece of me that was like, I hate him right now. <laughs> but I, I think I love him a little bit more, too. Like, that's just a... And, and it's, I think it's moments like that that, uh, that we've been able and very fortunately enough to have uh, a lot of and those, those really, you know, they, they solidify friendships and that's what we're very thankful to have. Thank you. Thank you. When I drink, I tend to get chatty and I make all these elaborate plans for the future that I'm going to do with all my best friends and travel everywhere. Sounds normal. And if I'm at, at someone's house, I tend to, you know, clean up a little. <laughs> Could you tell what each other do when you guys drink? Yeah. <laughs> You're welcome. The last time I said it, I got in trouble. So um, I will, I will defecate. What did you say? I don't think that's what she said. <laughs> No, I might. <laughs> okay, all right, that's enough. There's a, there's a big, English language is so funny because there's a big difference between defecated wienerlings and desiccated wienerlings. And I just realized it right now. Sorry, Tammy. Um, it's true, though. There's he like, he eats. Letters. I do, I eat a lot. Like, ravenously. Uh, my favorite... Uh, example of this was years ago and <laughs> uh, 
we we were uh, housemates uh, in season four. Um, I had the I had the whole basement. He had the house. He, it was his house, and I was like, he's like, hey, why don't you just why don't you stay in the basement until you figure out where you want to where your apart where you want to get an apartment? And I was like, all right. So one month turned oh, yeah, into the yeah. entire season. <laughs> um, but anyway, one day, one night we came home after being out to dinner and had a few drinks. And, uh, he's like, all right, I'm just probably gonna find something else to eat. I'm like, we just ate dinner. He's like, yeah, I'm hungry. I'm like, right, I'm going to bed. So the next morning I wake up, I go upstairs to the kitchen, I open the fridge, and I'm like, weren't there some marinating ribs? I'm pretty sure there were some marinating ribs that were supposed to be cooked today. Marinating, not not, marinated, not, it, uh, not cooked. cooked. Ribs. In a that Tom container. Welling had brought over, by the yeah, way. Yeah, and I'm like, ooh, I'm gonna cook up those ribs today. It's like football Sunday. It was like, ooh, ooh where did they go? <laughs> Jared? Yeah? Where were those ribs that Tom gave us? I ate them last night. <laughs> All of them? Yeah. <laughs> How you feeling, buddy? I'm a little, sick. A little off. <laughs> We were shooting, we were shooting the... Those weren't cooked! What? <laughs> Those were raw! <laughs> I thought they tasted a little funny. I, and and you ate them all? Yeah, yeah they didn't taste good. funny enough. We were shooting the wishing well I thought you, it was like a full slab of ribs. It was several slabs of Maui ribs. Maui yeah. ribs, Jesus. Close to Maui. ta -da. And I didn't buy them, I didn't purchase them, so I didn't know if they were cooked or not, but they looked dark. And I was like, yeah, they're marinating in like sauce. Now he's sauce. So uh, I, I ate them, yes. Uh, we got to set in Squamish, which is an hour drive. Um, and driving around when you've had eight ounces of uncooked red meat is not a lot of fun. Um, <laughs> I got sick. We were sure. I literally <laughs> had just the thought of what he went, he did. I was like, we, if you watch, if you watch the scene, it's the wishing well scene when there's a the penny is stuck to the bottom of the wishing well and we can't pull it out. So that restaurant, we shot all the scenes that day, and I got to set, and I was obviously ashen faced and pale, and they were like, uh, go to your trailer, call the doctor, get him some Pedialyte. And I'm barking, and <laughs> ugly sight, and so all the stuff to Jensen and the scenes is with a photo double. And then finally, like six hours, this is one of the joys of filming. Uh, I'm <coughs> grotesquely ill in my trailer, like shivering, uh, with a sh B vitamin shot to the butt. And, uh, <laughs> don't. Uh, and then we don't finally, need the details. Finally around like 2, a 2 p.m., I'm like, okay, I guess I can function now. I'm like, cool, get to set. I was like, all right, so I shot all my stuff uh, that same day. But yeah, that was the, like, season four. So he eats raw ribs, that's yeah. one thing. Yeah, yes. He becomes... Long story short. He gets into a funny, almost like... He kind of becomes like normal Jared, where he's like... <laughs> Everything's just kind of like a big old smile. Kind of a little, a little absent in the eyes. Like, having a good time. Everything's funny, and everything's kind of like... So... I get happy. Yeah, he gets happy. He gets pretty giddy. It's not so. a bad thing. I get hungry, he gets Better hungry. than angry. Yeah. No kidding. Uh, <coughs> was that on me? So, uh, this just made me think of a story that Misha wanted me to share with you guys. Uh, the other weekend, uh, I was home in Austin. Uh, took the family out uh, and met some friends at <coughs> this, uh, this winery uh, that's down the road from the brewery. And so we brought them some beer and it was, you know, kind of a little exchange. And, and we knew the owner, so we go over there and they were having kind of this like uh, festival out there. So it was lots of people, big crowds of people, uh, food trucks, and uh, you know, there were, like carnival games, and it was just a, it was a big, big, nice, fun afternoon. Um, and there were like party buses that would show up, and you know, like bachelor party, bachelorette parties, and like it was just, it was lots, hundreds and hundreds of people. So we're out there with kids, and we're having like a picnic, we got barbecue and stuff, and, um, and this is later, this is kind of the, you know, late afternoon, there's some drunk people walking around, <laughs> and I noticed there's a couple of like paramedics 
uh, attending to this one, this one uh, young lady. And they, I, I walk by and I just kind of take notice. Of, she's like kind of sitting on a, you know, little chair. The paramedics are kind of like talking to her. And as I walk by, one of the paramedics, they're both young ladies, one of them goes, <gasps> And it's, there's an awkward moment <laughs> when someone does that to you and then immediately clamps up. So it's the, you know, I'm walking by and she looks at me and she says, And her partner noticed that she had done that, so she immediately looks at me and I'm just like... <laughs> and I keep walking. A few moments later, the very intoxicated young lady that they were attending to comes strolling over. <laughs> and she comes up to me, and I know, keep in mind, my, my, my kids are here, and, and so on. I see this coming and I, I make an attempt to like head it off in the past. So I get up from the I get up from where we're sitting and I just kinda like, you know, walk a few yards over this way and then she comes right up to me and she's like, Hi. <laughs> I I'm I'm curvy. And I first out here in Lena. And I don't I don't know who you are. She's like, but did my friends over here? <laughs> I'm like, uh huh. Hey, just you want a picture? <laughs> so, I'm Kirby. I'm, I'm from South Carolina. I'm like, I, I got that. I'm just like, okay, I'm gonna go get them. And she, she walks, she walks over. And while she's talking to me, I see them behind, and they're like... <laughs> like they clearly didn't send her to do this. And so, so she goes back, I mean, just... And she's like got heels on and this little, like, sundress, and it's just all... <laughs> Apart. And, and so, so she goes and she talks to the, the paramedic and they start walking over with her and while they're walking towards me, they're just like, <laughs> and I'm kind of like making sure the kids are at bay and, and so, so they, get, they come up to me and Kirby like right out in front. She's like, hi, I'm Kirby. <laughs> Not a word of a lie. Paramedic, paramedic. Kirby walks right up. She's like, "Hi, Kirby." And I'm like, "Wait, <laughs> South Carolina." <laughs> and she goes like this. Hits the deck, legs up, skirt open. And I just look at the paradise and I'm like, she's all yours. <laughs> He's now wanted for murder. <laughs> oh, Kirby, if you're out there. <laughs> you made my day. She wanted me to tell you that story. Okay, so I love hearing about on set stuff, and I was curious can you tell us any, about any shenanigans on set from this season? Essentially, set is basically what you're witnessing happening right here. <laughs> this, is, this is pretty much a, 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 a typical day on set. Just, what? Something did just happen. I don't, I, I heard me like in your head. Was that just like. Wait, I think I just... Yeah, I just had an idea. I just... 
I'll think of it. I think something did just happen. I did just remember a funny story. There's a there's a Fairmont in the uh, in the Vancouver airport, and I was just walking through the airport the other day, and I remember this story. And there was a day. Speaking of wearing makeup, um, there was a day where the <laughs> on set. But we, it was season one, and when you're filming film, which we were, seasons one and two, you have to wear a lot more makeup than when you're filming digital. When you're wearing digital, they don't have to really do anything, they just kind of make sure you don't have bags under your eyes. But with film, it's kind of like being on, on stage, like in a theater play, you wear a lot of makeup, so it's pretty obvious in person. Um, and Jensen and I had been filming until like three or four in the morning. We had an early, early flight to go to Los Angeles and do some press. And we were like, we were both thinking, if we go home, set our alarms and try to wake up. There's no way we're gonna wake up, get to the airport time. Let's just go crash at the Fairmont for, get a couple hours, you know, just get whatever kind of shutout we can. We're still in our early 20s, and so we could do that. Um, would have saved us probably an hour and a half or so. Yeah, instead of going from wherever we were to downtown, because you were at the Wall Center and all that stuff, um, and then back. So we just headed to the airport. We're like, let's crash on the, the, the couches through security, but that wasn't open yet. And so we go up to the, um, to the desk, and we're like, hey, we just need a room for like two hours. <laughs> Vancouver's a very, Vancouver's a very a very progressive city. It's and an airport hotel. Man. Airport hotel. Yeah, we're caked in makeup. Bang <laughs> bang like, in the just in a hotel for a couple hours. That's all we need. Um, and the person is pretty un unfazed, and I'm unfazed. They're like, oh, yeah, it's you know, it's a progressive city. Like, okay, you're in 201, our King Suite. I'm like, wait, 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 what? Yeah, we have you in our deluxe King Suite. It's gonna be we're like two kings, right? Like, what? Well, oh, do you want two beds? Like, I know the makeup and the by the hour thing, but yes. But don't let the hair fool you, okay? We just need to crash out for a couple of hours. Walking through the airport laughing, thinking of that story. It was expensive. They, they wouldn't give us a. We want, essentially, we wanted a discount. Well, it was the first and last time that ever happened. <laughs> yeah. We walked by the Fairmont like this. We wanted a discount because it was like 200 bucks. We're like, 200 bucks for an hour and a half of sleep is ridiculous. Can you give it to us for like 50 or something? Just a couple hours? Like, no, no. He's like, no, we're going to have to clean the sheets. <laughs> No, but I mean, he'll, he sweats. I'll, I'll stop talking. Makeup rubs off on the pillow. Because <laughs> you sleep on your stomach, right? <laughs> That's why, dude. This is... Can we control all the leave everything that's just happened? Can we put Jeffrey D. Morgan back up here? Hey, 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 hey. Hey. Were you hanging from the rafters? <laughs> I forgot my coffee. <laughs> I thought he was going to come out and give us some like pearl of wisdom. He's like, listen guys, when you start heading down that road in a story, and it starts right. going south. But no, I just forgot my coffee. <laughs> You guys talking about me? What? <laughs> no. What? What he said? No, we were about to part where we were talking about the makeup on the pillow. So I'm fairly certain you don't want to stick around much longer. Awkward. <laughs> no, I really need to just come and get my coffee. <laughs> Thanks. family, SBN Garden Girl here, and I need your help. My mom and I are trying to open up an afternoon tea place in the Boston Metro West area, and we started a Kickstarter campaign. We can't open this without help, and I don't 
like asking for money or for donations, but we can't make it into a reality um, without support. And I'm asking you for support. Um, if you ever enjoyed my videos and wanted to give back a little, this is how. Uh, the Kickstarter link is in the description, and if you go to that, you can donate a dollar. Seriously, we're just asking for a dollar. You can always donate more. Um, and no matter what amount you donate, we, we greatly appreciate it. And each dollar definitely impacts it to our goal. Like, if you all just donate a dollar, we would reach, probably reach our goal. <laughs> Seriously. If you can't donate a dollar, that's okay. Like, don't, don't feel bad. Like, this is not an obligation, and I'm not gonna hold it against you. But you can always share the Kickstarter page and just get more views, and hopefully other people can support it with money. And that is also supporting it, because you're helping us raise the funds to create this thing that's important to me and my mom. Like, we really, we really want to open this. Um, so yeah, it's called Julian's Afternoon Tea Experience. I don't remember if I said it in the beginning of this video. And yeah, so please share. Please donate if you can. If you can't, you're all good. Um, and yeah, if you do donate, please comment on the Kickstarter page. That helps with the algorithm. Um, and again, more views, more hopeful funding. I really don't like to ask for help in this way, especially when it's related to money, but we can't create this into existence without you. So, please, just don't know me. Just don't need to tell them, please. Um, and yeah, thank you for, one, thank you for watching, and thank you for all the support throughout the years, and just thank you. I, I can't say, I, I don't know, I can't, words. <laughs> um, thank you for this SBN Con Girl experience, um, and I'm so happy and glad I get to share a part of the con experience with all of you, and yeah, it's been fun. Yeah, so thank you. Regardless if you do or don't donate, or whatever you do or don't, uh, I hope you have a lovely day. And if not, I hope it gets better soon. Okay. Hey, SBN family, SBN Garden Girl here, and I need your help. My mom and I are trying to open up an afternoon tea place in the Boston Metro West area, and we started a Kickstarter campaign. We can't open this without help, and I don't like asking for money or for donations, but we can't make it into a reality um, without support, and I'm asking you for support. Um, if you ever enjoyed my videos and wanted to give back a little, this is how. Uh, the Kickstarter link is in the description, and if you go to that, you can donate a dollar. Seriously, we're just asking for a dollar. You can always donate more. Um, and no matter what amount you donate, we, we greatly appreciate it. And each dollar definitely impacts it to our goal. Like, if you all just donate a dollar, we would reach, probably reach our goal. <laughs> Seriously. If you can't donate a dollar, that's okay. Like, don't, don't feel bad. Like, this is not an obligation, and I'm not gonna hold it against you. But you can always share the Kickstarter page and just get more views, and hopefully other people can support it with money. And that is also supporting it, because you're helping us raise the funds to create this thing that's important to me and my mom. Like, we really... We really want to open this. Um, so yeah, it's called Julian's Afternoon Tea Experience. I don't remember if I said it in the beginning of this video. 
And yeah, so please share. Please donate if you can. If you can't, you're all good. Um, and yeah, if you do donate, please comment on the Kickstarter page that helps with the algorithm. Um, and again, more views, more hopeful funding. I really don't like to ask for help in this way, especially when it's related to money, but we can't create this into existence without you. So, please, just don't ever, just don't need to tell them, please. Um, and yeah, thank you for, one, thank you for watching, and thank you for all the support throughout the years, and just thank you. I, I can't say, I, I don't know, I can't, words. <laughs> Um, thank you for this SBN Con Girl experience. Um, and I'm so happy and glad I get to share a part of the con experience with all of you. And, yeah, it's been fun. Yeah. So thank you. <laughs> Regardless if you do or don't donate, or whatever you do or don't, uh, I hope you have a lovely day. And if not, I hope it gets better soon. Okay.